the hunger and eager eagerness to win, you know, at the highest level. You know, um, especially being in a great Western Conference with great players every single night. Just going out there every single night and just playing at the highest of highest level and competing against the best of the best. You know, uh, I think this time around is it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. Taking you through 10 points for the upcoming Spurs season with NBA champions Brendan Haywood and David Griffin. I'm Jared Greenberg. The only remaining links to the Spurs' last title, Patty Mills and Marco Bellinelli. Wow. So we start here with number one on the Spurs' season. The more things change, the more things stay the same for the Spurs, question mark. What are the Spurs going to miss the most? Not having Manu, not having Tony, and not having... Kawhi Leonard. For me, it's easy. It's going to be not having Kawhi Leonard because they're not going to have that talent. They're not going to have that guy that can be a max player for you. Um, they have DeMar DeRozan, but he's a little bit different than Kawhi because Kawhi is one of the elite two-way players that we have in this league. He checks so many boxes for you on a night where he's not scoring the basketball. He can have seven or eight points and be playing terrible from the field, but he can be killing it on the defensive end. There's not a lot of those guys in the league today, and the fact that he's no longer on the Spurs, I think the Spurs are really going to miss that, especially when we talk about this team in the playoffs. I think it's the veteran leadership and presence of Manu. For 21 years, they've had one or two of Tim Duncan, Tony, and Manu in that locker room, mm -hmm. and they were really carrying forth Pop's wishes and, and bringing all of Pop to that culture. And they really were the voices of, of the front office, I think, to a huge degree. And without that, I think this is uncharted territory for Pop the coach, and more importantly for the organization as a whole. They're, they are now part of the NBA as we've all known it for those 21 years. And it'll be interesting to see how the, all that evolves. Guys, I had the chance to be in San Antonio for media day, speaking with the guys about what they'll miss and how they'll adjust to all the changes. Definitely feels different this year because it's uh, a whole new team again. And uh, no Manu, which is big for me because I feel like he's always been like the last little comfort blanket for Pop in a way that he has one guy that knows everything. So this year feels way different, you know, having DeMar, you know, such a, a big piece of the team come in and we kind of have to figure out our chemistry together. So this year definitely feels different. I look at it as a refreshing opportunity, a, a, a new flavor kind of thing, a new blood, yeah. and uh, with some uh, very high quality pieces. Uh, I see our team with a lot of depth, a uh, nice mixture between veteran and experience with uh, youth. So uh, now it's just a matter of uh, how that all translates into the court. Principles of how we do things or what the process usually is will probably stay the same, but uh, there are tweaks every year, whether it's a tweak on offense or defense or uh, administratively, you know, this group of guys might want to do something a little bit differently. Spurs will have nine players on the roster with two or fewer years of playing experience. Kawhi and Danny Green weren't the most vocal guys. Certainly they contributed on the court. But, but what is it, Griff, about finding how your leadership is going to go about leading? Well, I think a big part of it, too, is that they're a team other than DeRozan. That they don't necessarily have elite pieces that have a role around LaMarcus. Mm. And so it's going to be finding each other's role relative to LaMarcus. I think it's very clear that Pop has made it clear to, to LaMarcus he's going to be the ringleader and that they're going to run offense through him. And it's going to be about he can take – that Spurs team will go as far as he can take them offensively to a huge degree. So they're going to integrate DeMar into what they do, I think. But it's really going to be LaMarcus's team. So for me, I, I think that's going to be something that's really critical for them as, as they move forward. But, but again, you've got LaMarcus who admitted he's not an outspoken guy. DeMar is not an outspoken guy. Do you need a, a team to have an outspoken guy? You don't need a rah-rah guy. Every team has, some teams have a rah-rah guy, and you, and you can spot it sometimes. You don't know if it's always genuine, but you do need leadership. You do need a guy that comes into the locker room before the coach even comes in and says, hey, guys, tonight we're not bringing it. We're not executing. And when guys hear him speak, it means power. In 2011 for our team, it was Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd wasn't the most vocal guy in the world. But when he got up there in front of the locker room and said, Brendan, you need to do this. Tyson, you have to do this. It resonated with everybody because, hey, this guy doesn't speak a lot. So we all followed suit. 
I'm not sure who that guy is. Is it DeJounte Murray? I don't know who he, it is. He wants to be it. Yeah, but, but he's very young. And so not only do, it, it, are we not sure if he can carry that role, will guys listen to him? Because sometimes when a young guy says some things, you have some older guys that have more experience that might be rolling their eyes. So it, a lot of it comes down to can you win your teammates over? I think DeJounte Murray can do that. He's known to be a tireless worker, and that's the biggest thing. If you're a worker, and your work matches what your mouth is saying, guys will generally follow you. So I, I look for Murray to be that leader for this team. Let's talk about how this translates to on-the-court success. Last year, Kawhi Leonard played just nine games. They win 47. They finish seventh in the West. By most accounts, that was exceeding expectations yeah. when you don't have a top-five player in the world. But LaMarcus Aldridge played at an all-NBA level. What is a fair expectation? Can they be better this year? The thinking is, well, we had DeMar DeRozan, and this team is, should be better. Well, they're adding DeMar DeRozan, and January 30th of last year, they're 34 and 19. They're third in the Western Conference. They went 13 and 16 the rest of the way once everything sort of came unraveled with Kawhi. And that really showed itself on the defensive side of the ball. Their net rating at that time, what defensively, was 101.1. It's number two in the NBA. They end up dropping down to 11th at 104.9. And there were big stretches where they were not able to get critical stops. So I think it's, it's less about DeRozan walking through the door, and it's more about them finding faith and trust in one another. And this new group, you know, Powell talks about the idea that it's a new flavor. Well, it may be a new flavor, but they all need to be part of the same pie sometime soon. Death, taxes, and the Spurs are going to make the playoffs. Those are the three things that are pretty much guaranteed. I know it's a new group. I know we have new voices. But I think the Spurs would be okay. I think when you add DeMar DeRozan to a team that basically didn't have Kawhi last year, that team without Kawhi won 47 games. You add DeMar, I think they're going to be a lot better. And then on, on top of that, I just think that Greg Popovich is one of the best in the league at getting guys to buy into what their roles are. Role definition. People think X's and O's is the most important thing a coach can do. It's role definition. And that's one of the biggest things that we talk about. When we talk about the Spurs way, guys don't get out of character. You never saw Danny Green coming down, chucking step back threes. He knew that wasn't his role. He knew everybody had their role. And that's the biggest thing the Spurs do. And that's why they're so consistent. They get guys to play the right way. If your job is to screen and rebound, that's what you do. You don't take turnaround jumpers. If your job is to drive the ball to the hole and find teammates, that's what you do. Greg Popovich is excellent at getting guys to do the right things the right way. He'll do it again this year. The Spurs will be successful. On to point number three, speaking of which, a big question for the Spurs, how much longer will Greg Popovich be the team's head coach? On media day, Lamarcus Aldridge said that Pop isn't showing any signs of slowing down. I don't see him getting tired or, you know, trying to leave anytime soon, but, you know, anything is possible. But, no, he he seems passionate and he seems uh, excited for the, the uh, challenge ahead. You know, he's such a, a smart guy that I feel like he sees this, this new team, this new makeup as a, a chance to be a, a new challenge for him. So I see him looking forward to it. And, you know, I've talked to him all summer and he's been fired up. It's interesting because we had linked LaMarcus and Pop together when he first signed from Portland saying the thought was Pop would be there at least as long as LaMarcus was. They repaired their relationship issues. Not only how long will Pop coach, but what type of coach do you expect to see with this young group? Well, I think no one can tell you when Pop is going to retire except for Pop. You know, as a coach, you, you know when you don't feel like doing this anymore. You know when you don't feel like getting up early, going to those meetings, and staying there late after games. Only, only Greg Popovich knows that. No one else really knows the answer. But as far as his coaching style, I think his coaching style will be just fine. His coaching style is one I like to call versatile, which means that he can basically coach any type of style, whether it's uh, getting big men the ball, whether it's ball movement, whether it's getting guys in isolations in the mid post. His offense and his style of play and his coaching coaching style has evolved and changed depending on the players he has. So I have no questions about Greg Popovich. I have no questions about his style. I have no idea when he's going to retire, but when he does, he'll have, a, he'll have a lot of wins underneath that belt. So one of the things that I think the Spurs for 21 years, the New England Patriots under Belichick have taught us is that adversity creates opportunity. And what LaMarcus is telling you is Pop sees the, the opportunity and he's practicing what he preaches now. And that's really meaningful. And so in terms of how long the run goes, I have no concern about that at all as a fan. What I want to see, you talked about it earlier, it's not just role delineation, it's role acceptance. 
And these young kids, in a situation where there's not a clear cut number one, how are they all going to accept their role? And how are they going to feel playing around LaMarcus, who obviously has been given the keys to the car? Pop last year, when LaMarcus asked for the trade, made it very clear to LaMarcus, you are going to be the main featured attraction. DeMar can work with that because he worked with Kyle, but what do the rest of these kids look like around the two of them? Because they're all going to be fighting for their piece of it as well. 14 wins away from passing Pat Riley for fourth most in regular season wins. It's been quite the accomplished career from Greg Popovich. He's not done yet. News from around the NBA, Tony Parker just signed a deal with Charlotte. It's going to be really bizarre to see him wearing any other jersey. The Kawhi Leonard saga is over. The Spurs traded the disgruntled All-Star along with Danny Green to the Toronto Raptors. The end of an era in San Antonio. The great Manu Ginobili says so long after 16 years and starts the clock on his Hall of Fame induction. All that leads to this a very jumbled up projected depth chart. And I think this is a very fair five to assume might be the opening night starters that Greg Popovich throws out there. But I would find, I'd find it hard to believe this is the lineup that would end the season just because as Greg Popovich said during media day, if Lonnie Walker proves he's an all-star from day one, I'm not sending him down to Austin. I'm playing him. Right, so we bring in B. Wood and, and David Griffin to talk about some of these guys. And let's start here with the draft pick, Lonnie Walker, a guy that, that many have high hopes for this season. Had a chance to watch a lot of him because, of course, he's in ACC country playing in Miami. And when you watch him play, he kind of struggled early on in Miami. But what always popped off the screen is he could get wherever he wanted to off the bounce. He was very confident and as the season went along. His game got better and better. He started making plays. You started seeing it sometimes in the summer league as well. But he really started making some good step backs, taking him to the basket. I loved how athletic he was. And I think he gives him that pop. Lonnie Walker is, is the player that I think the Spurs need. They're not going to be sending him down to the D. They're not going to be sending him to Austin. They need him right away because they need as much athleticism and youth as they can in this lineup. Jakob Pertl is a guy that came over in the DeMar DeRozan deal and a guy who flourished at times for Dwayne Casey in Toronto. What do you think they can get out of him this year in year one in San Antonio? Well, once upon a time, David Robinson and Tim Duncan were forming the Twin Towers, mm -hmm. and they worked really, really well together. They've done less and less of that as they've gone along and as the game has grown and evolved and changed. They've certainly been at the forefront of some of that change. But I think what Pirtle gives them now, if he's not starting the first game, he probably finishes it. He's somebody that defensively will really help them in the paint. They struggled mightily the second half of the season to defend in the paint. But more importantly, it's, it's interesting. We saw some clips when we talked about Toronto as well. Pirtle can actually initiate offense for yeah. them a little bit, and that'll play to DeMar's strength somewhat as well. Yeah, I think having a guy like Pirtle is great for you because he can start or he can come off the bench. He's not going to complain either way. And then his skill set, the versatility, that's what the NBA is all about. They say big men are dead. No, big men that can't play are dead. Big men that are versatile have a place in this league. Yaka Pirtle is very versatile. We saw him doing some dribble handoffs in the highlight. Sometimes he's crafty, he can keep the give, make a play, come down the lane, give you a dunk or two. So he can do a lot of different things from this elbow area. And that's very important when you have somebody like DeMar because they're probably looking for him to slice and come off some pin downs as well. And they can get some quick, easy shots. DeMar DeRozan said during media day, Jakob Pertl set some of the hardest screens he's ever run into in his life during practice up in the Toronto days. Greg Popovich, speaking about how to use DeMar DeRozan, said he learned his lesson with the issues they had with LaMarcus Aldridge a couple of years ago. DeMar, is already, he's already an all-star. Uh, and he plays a certain way, so there'll be some things that uh, we'll try to add to his game uh, if he's willing. But I'm not going to jump on him like I did L.A. I tried to turn L.A. into John Havlicek. Okay, a couple of things here about this. Number one, the Spurs were ahead of the time with shooting the three, and then they've kind of regressed back to the mean, right, and become a team that's worked inside. So you think naturally that fits DeMar DeRozan, who's been a mid-range assassin. But uh, on the other hand, we saw DeMar DeRozan last year make more threes than he ever had in his career. And I also want to point out, too, he became quite the playmaker, averaged more assists per game than many starting point guards in the league, right? So let us see here out in the court how you think Greg Popovich implements DeRozan into this offense. Well, I think in this situation, uh, for the highlights, we're going to let Griff be DeMar DeRozan. So uh, the, 
Why is that? Well, I think that's clear. It's uh, clear because he's the best athlete out here. I okay, mean, cool. I've got well, one of the best things about DeMar DeRozan is he is excellent playing in the elbow area and off the mid post. So, Jared, if I throw you the ball, they can just run us what we like to call a simple wide pin down where you can take LaMarcus Aldridge, let him set a pin down for DeRozan. DeRozan catches the ball, and that's where DeRozan is so good. When he catches this ball on the run, he's excellent at setting his man up. Watch how he moves a lot of times. DeMar will come off the screen, keeps his man on his hip, and then when he tight curls in there, he can get a shot, he can pass the ball to a teammate, and we all know he's crafty as well. He has all the Euro steps, the step backs. He's excellent at getting to the free throw line, and that's how he gets to the free throw line. He gets downhill. Now, that's the wide pin down. We also have what we like to call the tight pin down, more of a stack, where basically the big comes down. Now, this time, the Rosen's cutting off tight. And once again, this can turn into an immediate shot or it can turn into a nice ISO situation in the mid post where he might be, one of the, he might be the best mid post player or mid range player that we have in the NBA. These are all excellent situations that the Spurs can use, al along with dribble handoffs from Yaka yeah. Pertle to get DeMar DeRozan going. I think all of that is how Greg Popovich will use him. Yeah, he's going to get his screen and rolls as well. But this, this area right here is where DeMar DeRozan has made his name and his fame. Being a mid-range maven, I think Greg Popovich will use that, and he will use that a lot to his strengths. And this is how this is going to impact LaMarcus as well. If this is LaMarcus on this tight curl mm -hmm. here along the, the, the lane that we talked about, when DeMar comes off of LaMarcus, he's going to be here. LaMarcus is going to space to that corner. Yeah. He's a 47% corner three-point shooter for Portland. When he was taking a high number of threes, He's, that's his corner. So you're going to see them run this action to this side and create the opportunity for LaMarcus to open the floor up for DeMar. And to your point about DeMar's playmaking element, he's going to be able to get the ball to LaMarcus. They're going to be great together in that way. One more thing about that play. Look at the spacing. When DeMar, come, Jerry, hit the ball. When DeMar comes off this pin down that we're talking about right here, when he comes off, if the big stops him at all, it's an automatic pop out to the corner. If they try to switch it, though, now L.A., being the smart basketball player he is, he's not going to go to the corner. I have a two-guard on me. Goes right here, gets it on the block where he likes to get to his pound game. We can give it to a turnaround jumper or get right inside with his jump hook. So I think that type of action, those yeah. type of plays will be excellent for DeMar, but also LaMarcus Aldridge. Yeah, LaMarcus, his three-point attempts have gone up each and every year he's played in San Antonio and told me the other day, in fact, that he believes Pop will let him expand that part of his game even more this upcoming season. Spurs team preview point number nine. Last year, the streak of consecutive 50 win seasons snapped at 18, but playoff streak is alive. This year, they look to make it 22 straight years going to the postseason. If they do it, they match the Philadelphia 76ers for longest consecutive playoff streak in NBA history. Let's talk postseason. Let's talk wins. We'll put the number at 44 and a half. B. Wood, more or less than 44 and a half? Postseason, I definitely think the Spurs are going to the postseason. That's just the Spurs way. They always find a way to get there. I also have them going north of 44 and a half. I see them around best in their 47 that they had last year because I see DeMar DeRozan being a bigger part of this team than Kawhi was for their last season. So 47 was the eighth seed last year. They'll be north of 44 and a half, but I think they're one of five teams to get three spots at the bottom of the way. Do they get it? They're in. They're in? Come on, man. You already know. It's the Spurs way, baby. <laughs> Be Wood Griffin, our staff. I'm Jared. Spurs way, man.